Himalayan singing bowls are beautiful to the eye and enchanting to the ear. One of the things that makes them sonically unique is the modulation which occurs when they are played. But why does this happen? Why do we hear this pulsation or beating when the bowl is struck or rubbed with a mallet? In order to understand, we have to look at the methods of playing individually because the modulation that occurs happens in different ways, depending on the style of play. When a singing bowl is struck, the mallet impacts the bowl, which deforms the rim and causes it to vibrate in many subdivisions at once. These subdivisions of the bowl are called modes. When the bowl vibrates in two parts, this is the first mode of vibration, and it produces the fundamental pitch. While the bowl vibrates in two parts, it also vibrates in thirds, fourths, and in fifths, etc. These vibratory modes produce the subsequent overtones. But this doesn't account for the pulsations that we hear. When the bowl is struck, its modes oscillate between two polar extremes. The bowl's physical imperfections cause these extremes to be different in size, producing two closely spaced frequencies at once. These frequencies, also called mode pairs, sound like a single pulsating overtone, but they are actually two pure tones, which interfere with one another and that interference creates the beating or modulation that we perceive. The distance between two peaks in hertz will equal the amount of beats per second. Each bowl produces mode pairs at signature intervals. This gives unique character to the bowl and shapes its acoustic signature. The distance between mode pairs does not follow a pattern and is dependent entirely on the bowl's shape, size, and density. Now, when a bowl is rubbed with a mallet, whether it is suede or wood, it also produces modulation, but in different ways. This time, the bowl is excited through a process called stick slip, a phenomenon also responsible for the sound that occurs when a wet finger rubs across the rim of a wine glass. The mallet repeatedly sticks to the surface of the bowl and then releases, sticks and releases, very rapidly. This friction causes the bowl to vibrate primarily in its first and second modes. The modes above these are suppressed by the contact of the mallet with the instrument. As we rub the bowl around the rim, it introduces tangential motion, vibration that moves circularly along with the mallet. If you play the bowl with a soft suede mallet, for instance, it will tend to excite the first mode of vibration, which divides the bowl into two halves. To the listener, this will perceive to modulate four times per rotation around the rim, because the modulation we perceive this time is the volume of the instrument rising and falling as the vibratory modes circle the bowl. Now, if we play the bowl with a harder mallet, it will tend to bring out the second mode of vibration, which divides the bowl into thirds. This will create six modulations per rotation. These are the two primary modes introduced by rubbing, but higher ones may also be excited, like when a hard mallet rattles chaotically around the bowl. This explains how bowls modulate and what causes these distinct effects. There is a world of subtlety to explore when you bring this knowledge into your practice. It can enrich how you play and also the experience of anyone listening.